Chapter 9, The Illusion of Romance Romantic love is an attraction that cuts off spirit and community, leaving two people to invent a relationship by themselves. It is the opposite of a relationship that lets spirit be the guide. Romance ignores all the stages of a spiritual coming together, where we begin at the bottom of the mountain and gradually travel in unison to the top. It does not leave room for the true identity of the people involved to show through. It fosters anonymity and forces people to masquerade. Before I was married, I didn't look at young men in the village with romantic or sexual interests. You have to understand that in the village, there is a different way of seeing people. People aren't viewed as sources of sexual attraction. People are looked at primarily as brothers, sisters, friends. We have good relationships with the opposite sex without any kind of sexual feeling. Girls and boys grow appreciating one another as spirits, as brothers and sisters, without the interference of sexuality. That's how people are brought up in the village. The elders teach that if our relationship with people around us is focused on sexual attraction, it diminishes our capacity for friendship and our eyes will not allow us to see others as they really are. Today in the cities of West Africa, you will see the same romantic kind of love that you see here. The influence of television and movies is everywhere. Young people in the city believe that's the way of the West. And since they've been to school, they have to prove that they are civilized. They have to do it the way of the civilized. The elder's wisdom of working from the bottom of the mountain to the top means that you make sure the other person understands who you are and you understand who that person is every step of the way. You learn which areas make your partner scream and what makes your partner laugh, things like that. The elders know that if you start the relationship off with romance, more often than not, many things are covered up and it will take years to find the true identity of your partner. That is, if you are given the chance. I know that some people live their whole life with a stranger. Romantic love doesn't really fit in the village. It just doesn't work. The kind of passion, the kind of emotion and connection that Westerners look for from a romantic relationship, village people look for from spirit. The power of romantic love in the West is really a symptom of a separation from the spiritual. So the romantic, if you want to use that word, is with the spirit. If a man invites a woman into ritual space, or if a woman invites a man, perhaps that's what someone would see as romantic in the village. But it's not like, I'll take you on a trip or something like that. No, the basic attraction is towards spirit. You cannot take away from marriage or intimacy the presence of spirit as the guide who approves all the blessings that the elders and the community give. Romance, in that sense, has a different look from what indigenous people seek in relationship. In the village, we give because we want to give. And there is no going away and separating ourselves in a retreat of romance. Instead, we are encouraged to expand and share our gifts as a couple within the community. In the village, desire and lust are seen as messages brought into you from a spiritual source. If that drives you into disorderly conduct, that's where you spoil the invitation that spirit is implanting within you. The person who feels this kind of urge needs to find out first where the source is, not by looking at the other gender with sexual thoughts, but by becoming aware of the weakness
that being locked onto by spirit reveals. It doesn't mean that your hormones are making you do something. Something else is going on. That's the part you need to listen to. This is why intimacy has to be looked at ritualistically. This desire is desire to be on a journey with spirit. It is as though a horse has come in and wants you to go somewhere. Now you have to find out where is that horse? How is it configured? And what should you do in order to mount that horse without breaking your neck? Romance, as I understand it, is this path of coming together that leads to a honeymoon. During the crazy honeymoon, impossible promises are made. When you return home, you discover there is no way on earth these promises can be fulfilled. And so you brace yourself and hope all will work out. Then things start to fall apart. This is what I call the honeymoon suicide. Romance means hiding our true self in order to gain acceptance. It begins with doing every little thing for our partner, neglecting our true feelings until we reach a point of serious depletion. It would have been better from the beginning to say, I can give you this much, that's how far I can go. With your help, I might be able to go farther, but I won't give you a false image of myself. Without this kind of honesty, our partner is left to wonder, wow, is this the same person I married? He is left to pull out his hair and wonder if he is sane or his partner is insane. If a relationship is based on a one-way street, the person at the receiving end will do all he can to get his bottomless hole fed, not caring about what happens to his partner. That kind of person does not even care whether his partner lives or dies. He married Mrs. Perfect so that he could be taken care of and is not ready to have that changed. People in the West must always remember that the energy they vibrate sends a message that only certain people will respond to. They must make their intention clear while looking for someone, and they must keep that clarity once an intimate relationship is established. They must constantly check themselves to make sure they are staying in alignment with their true selves. The kind of attitude people have when initiating a relationship will determine what happens later. And if there is something unspoken, it will usually lead to the death of the relationship. If, for instance, your partner is holding something back and thinking, if I show this part of myself, then she is going to get scared and run away. Well, he can be sure you will someday run away. Openness is needed from the beginning so that people know what they are getting into. Being very nice, you know, is not always the right way. 